have designed a business where you are deliberately understaffing your stores, you're deliberately cutting costs, um, you're going to end up having these kinds of, you know, uh, widespread mistakes in pricing. I mean, that's just the reality of you are not actually providing enough labor to comply with the law and make sure that people are, are getting uh, charged what, what the price actually is. That they is on purpose. They want to do that because they want to run skeleton crews so that they do not have to keep as many workers so that the profit margins are higher. See, this is, this is how capitalism works, right? So you have one or a very small group of people who own the means of production, right? Well, if they want to keep profits high, there's a few things that they have to do. One of the things that they have to do is they will pass that on to the consumer by making sure that prices go are, are higher, right? That's one of the ways how they do it. Another way they do it is by making sure that there is less workers so that the profits are higher so that they don't have to pay as much in operation costs. Well, this can also harm companies because they're not being in compliance with keeping the prices that are supposed to be there. This also is in making sure that because the, there are, these places are understaffed, the quality of customer service goes down because guess what? If customers aren't being served properly, because they have such a tight grip on the market, for them, it's like, oh, well, where are you going to go? Another Dollar General? Another Family Dollar? Another Dollar Tree? Okay, fine, whatever. We're still going to be here. So then also safety regulations, right? Those things go by the wayside. Look. Those rat infestations that happen in Ar in Arkansas and their warehouses, how much you want to bet is because they didn't want to spend the money for pest control because that's money that they wanted to pocket themselves and profit. Dollar stores. Family Dollar. Dollar Tree. Dollar General. Dollar Dollar Bills, y'all. Dollar stores have been a main staple in hoods and hollas across this country. Now, I say they're taking advantage because when economic crises happen, especially to those of us who are poor and working poor, who comes in and slides on in and says, hey, we got some cheaper stuff for you. Come on in and see our wares, it's the dollar stores. And they're making billions, billions. Then on top of that, do, do, wait, when y'all go into a family dollar, don't you hate it when you're waiting in line and the line is like a mile long, all because they only have one register open and one person working, and then you have one person stocking in the back, and you ain't got nobody else working in the store. And it's peak time. It's like 5, 6 o'clock after everybody gets off of work, and they have to go by the store. There's a reason for that. There's a reason why they're always understaffed. There's a reason why they don't have uh, as many people working in order for you to be able to get in and get out. For a store so small, you spend a lot of time in line. Let's get into it. So let me share my screen in regards to what's going on. Let me get to it. Because uh, I didn't see this talked about too much in regards to these dollar stores. But there's a lot going on right now. Let me see. As far as dollar stores are concerned. Ah, uh, okay. So right now, there is going to be closures that's happening. 
And Family Dollar and Dollar Tree are going to be laying off workers as well. We're going to get into that too. But here we go. So this is came out a couple weeks back. Well, not even a whole week back. But it says Family Dollar and Dollar Tree will close 1,000 stores. This is big. I don't think you guys realize how big this is. So it says Family Dollar, the struggling discount chain that caters to low-income customers, predominantly in cities, said Wednesday it will close nearly 1,000 stores. Years of mismanagement and poor conditions in stores have hurt Family Dollar's brand. Family Dollar, which is owned by Dollar Tree, was recently fined more than $40 million for rat infestation at a warehouse that forced hundreds of stores to temporarily close. Decades high inflation that has hit shoppers hard and a wow, really? No, thank you. Sorry. Decades high inflation that hits shoppers hard and a general customer pullback has impacted family dollar customers and the change profits exacerbating its battle with discount competitors such as Dollar General, Walmart and others. It says, in addition, the reduction in benefits for the Supp Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, has left struggling families with as much as $250 less per month. Discount scores and consumer good companies say that they have felt the impact of that loss. First of all, let's get this out here right now. I am also on food stamps. Yes, quiet as it's kept. Yes, yours truly is also on food stamps. Guess what? When they drop our food stamps, then guess where we go less? We go less to the stores. And of course, Family Dollar is going to feel that because they cater to low income. So if you drop our food stamps, the profits also drop on a commensurate rate because we're not going to the stores as much. We can't afford to. On top of the inflation that has been going on within this country over the last uh, three to four years, everything has been going up. So therefore, it has been harming us the most. Look, I know a lot of people are saying, oh my God, we're hurting too, we're middle class, or oh, we're working class and we're making $60,000, $70,000 a year. Like, look, Yes, you guys are feeling a pinch. You guys are feeling some pain. But those of us who have combined incomes of less than $30,000 a year, we are hurting the most. Absolutely. Because guess what? We have to pay hidden taxes that some of y'all just don't have to pay. It's, it's getting real out here. The rise of homelessness is skyrocketing. The rise of, well, we just talked with Dr. Joe Stein, the rise of Egypt of evictions are skyrocketing as of right now. Now you have over 1,000 family dollars that are going to close? How many workers is that going to affect? Because you and I both know that workers at family dollar they're not raking in the dough when it comes to working there. So that's another burden that's going to be on the working poor. You know, as I don't say working class, I say the working poor. The reason why I say that is because we get left out every single time, day in and day out, we get left out. Everybody talks about, Oh, the middle class. Or Bernie Sanders will say, the working class, right? But those of us who are within a hair's breadth, hair's breadth, away from being out on the street, do we get talked about as much? No. This is why I bring us up more than usual. Because 
We need that representation, representation. I can't say talk today. Representation as well. So, quote from CEO Rick Drelling says, persistent inflation and reduced government benefits continue to pressure the low income consumers that comprise of sizable portion of family dollars customer base. So he says that's some of the reason, right? But one thing that he's not telling you is that his colleagues that are in these big box stores and the ones who own the means of production are really artificially inflating the prices so that they can make more in profits. Can we talk about what Tyson Chicken, Sanderson Farms, and Purdue Farms, how they automatically and artificially inflated the price of chicken and eggs so that they can make more money? And how Washington State is 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 putting out a lawsuit against them for artificially inflating the price of chicken and chicken products? Can we talk about it? Because it's because of them and many other corporations that are artificially inflating the prices, which means now who else has to inflate their prices? Well, it's the Targets, it's the Walmarts, it's the Amazons. All these other different companies have to do it too. Who's also doing it? Well, wouldn't it be the fuel, the, uh, you know, the fuel uh, companies, right? The Exxons and the BPs and the Coke industries. Aren't they increasing the prices of oil? What, is there somehow oil coming out a little bit less than it typically does? Somehow? Is it just being hard to pump out more? So now, yes, the oil prices are going up, which also affects down the line. And it gets passed on to us, the consumer. Says Family Dollar will close 600 locations this year in 370 stores over the next several years. As the store leases expire, Family Dollar has around 8,000 U.S. stores. Dollar Tree also said it will close 30 stores as leases expire. So it says the closures will improve the company's profitability. It's always about profit. Because they are likely to leave a void for Americans with already limited shopping choices. Family dollar stores are often in areas with few supermarkets, big box stores, and other retail options. Shares of Dollar Tree sank more than 13% to their lowest level this year in early trading on Wednesday. Now, it talks about understaff and hazard stores. We all know, like, this is no surprise that Family Dollar typically is understaffed. You can go in anytime and see that, look, they do not have enough people to man the registers. They do not have enough people to stock the shelves like they should because they run on skeleton crews already. And that's to keep the profits high because they don't care about workers. They care about the shareholders. The shareholders are a number one in their view. So with that being said, then that's why it is incumbent upon us to look at it from a systemic level because companies like Family Dollar, they're never going to care unless it is actually a worker-owned company. And by worker-owned, I'm not talking about publicly traded. I'm talking about worker-owned and operated, democratically owned and operated by the workers collectively. Because outside of that, they're not actually going to change their ways. Because ultimately, it's always about the profit incentive. So, and this actually continues to go into the article talking about how they had um, a lot that has happened in regards to rat infestations in some of their warehouses. So, it is just, you know, horrible what's going on in regards to Family Dollar. Uh, now, 
there is a boom happening with Dollar General, and we're going to get into more into Dollar General in a bit. It says General General has opened up about 1,000 stores a year, making it the fastest growing retailer in the United States. The company has around 18,000 stores. The companies are battling for many of the same low income shoppers, despite the name. These stores sell mostly food and everyday items between $1 and $10. So it's now a battle of the lower income. Uh, shopping experience that's happening in regards to these dollar stores. These dollar stores essentially also do not care about us at all. I want to share as well. Let me see. This as well. Yes because this I was come out of more perfect union and they're talking about Dollar General. Let me go here. There we go. And we're going to go over this as well, just to share what's going on with Dollar General. And this is from More Perfect Union. It's entitled, What Dollar General Doesn't Want You to Know. So we're going to get into this right now. Really see Dollar General is like a criminal organization. You are stealing from my community. And I think they're very aware of aware of it a classic bait and switch. Somebody at the top is making a lot of money. Go for a drive in any American county, and you'll likely soon pass by the yellow and black lettering of a Dollar General. Drive a little further, and another will appear. Then another, then another. Here's the other Dollar General store. It's seven miles from the last Dollar General store we were at. Hold up. Have you guys ever heard of the, the mattress firm conspiracy theory? Okay. Hang on to your hats. There's this conspiracy theory that whenever you go into a mattress firm, there's no customers, right? But then you'll have mattress firms almost completely across the street from another mattress firm. And it's like, what? Why are there so many mattress firms? Right? Some people are saying allegedly that some mattress firm that mattress firm may be involved in some like money laundering allegedly. That's why they have so many mattress firms around. Why is there so many dollar generals within a short distance? I mean, wouldn't it benefit to not have them as close? I mean, I'm just saying, baby. Like, you know, let, let, let's let's talk about it. Just a thought. Let's continue. With nearly twenty thousand Dollar General stores in forty eight states, the Tennessee based discount chain has sunk its teeth into lower income, rural, and suburban areas everywhere. 20,000 store. 20,000? 20, 20. Look, I'm going to tell you right now. You want to know how well the United States is doing? Look at how many dollar stores there are in comparison. Because we, who are low income, we're going to the family dollars. We're going to the Dollar Trees. We're going to the Dollar Generals. That's where we're going. Now, if we need a bigger selection, we may end up going to the Walmart, right? Or to, for some of us, it may be the Winn-Dixie, right? Some of y'all, it could be Af Acme. It could be Pathmark. Uh, maybe ShopRite. 
right? For those of you, especially in Northeast, for those of us here in the Southeast, you know, once in a while we can go to Publix, even though Publix is high as hell. We're shopping is a pleasure. Yeah, right. But when it comes to actual shopping, like I can't tell you how many times my mother goes to Family Dollar. And look, Family Dollar is, is a block over. I can walk to the Family Dollar. Right? Dollar Tree, two blocks away. Dollar General, about three blocks, four blocks away. So I have them all within, if you were to drive the furthest, five minutes. Dollar General is the furthest, then the closer one is Dollar Tree, and then the closest one is the Family Dollar. So that's what we have within our area, my area, right? And so this means that if you have this many dollar stores, just 20,000 alone in Dollar General, then you have, what, 8,000 stores of Family Dollar? So that's 28,000. Then forget, and then it add Dollar Tree into it. You're probably closing around 30,000 stores at least. We're not doing good because we can't afford to go to the, any of the other bigger stores. That tells you everything you need to know about what's going on in this country. And yet, I'm sorry, but somebody like Ryan Grimm and Crystal Ball talking about, well, the NLRB and look what good is Biden is doing with the economy. Ma'am, sir, it's not good. It's not. Look at how, look at, look, the amount of dollar stores has exploded at a commensurate rate with how we're doing financially because we have no other choice but to go there. If dollar stores are doing good, if they're booming and opening more stores, that's bad for us because that's the only option that we have. Let's continue. It's easy to look at the dollar stores and think, they are a sign of economic distress or a symptom of economic distress, but what we found is that they're in fact a cause of it. Underneath Dollar General's so-called low everyday prices in convenient locations lies a sinister business model and a massive scandal that hardly anybody knows about. The fact that we have to sue a company to get them to tell the truth is absurd in my mind to begin with. My name is Lori Hartline. I am a Dollar General shopper out of convenience in my neighborhood. What you see here is when you travel, you'll go from looking for a grocery store and before you get one, you have three Dollar General options. And that's all you have. In May of 2022, Lori Hartline started noticing some seemingly harmless discrepancies while shopping at her local Dollar General. When they opened up in, I think it was 2021, their price of my kitty litter was $8.95. Great. I purchased it all the time. I didn't pay attention. I go up there, I check out, I leave. Well, one day, wait a minute, $10? I noticed it. I asked them about it. Oh no, they've raised the price. Well, that doesn't say it on the shelf. Well, they just have to change it. It's, it's in the computer. It's not on the shelf. Next week, go in and buy cat litter. Same thing. That is not what the price says on the shelf. What am I doing wrong here? I was watching the news one morning and heard about Dollar General in the state of Ohio was being sued for deceptive pricing. That is what happens to me. I knew I wasn't crazy. I know it's just not me. After months of repeatedly being overcharged by Dollar General, Lori wrote a letter to the Oklahoma Attorney General. And within two days, I got a response that they forwarded the letter. Um, great. They responded back, Dollar General did, 
and they apologized and they said, we'll have a gift card for you. I said, okay, well, let me just ask, how much is it for? $10. Tell her to keep it. I don't want it. It was insulting. Lori's story was brought to attorney Mark Dan, where it became the basis for one of three class action lawsuits in Oklahoma, New York, and New Jersey. So first of all, they told her to take $10 and shut up. See how they feel about you? I'll tell you this. Imagine if Dollar General was worker owned. If it was worker owned, it would have been a way different experience in my opinion. This is why I think that workers should own the means of production. Because if we work and live and shop in the same area as these neighbors, we're not gonna cheat them like that. Wow, these companies, man, these corporations are evil. I don't think there's any question that Dollar General is doing this intentionally and systematically. June 22nd, I was overcharged four items out of 11. 795 was advertised 650. If you tell me one thing and then charge me something else, um, you know, in, in almost every jurisdiction in America, that would be theft by deception. Corporations, as we now know from the US Supreme Court, are people, and people need to follow the law. Dollar General's deceptive business practices run deeper than most realize, according to Stacey Mitchell a researcher at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. I think what they're looking for is places that have been, that, that lack you know, economic and political power, places that they can push around. They're often building in such numbers that it becomes impossible for a new grocery store or other locally owned businesses to develop in a neighborhood that really needs them. They kind of lock in poverty as they grow because poverty is the thing that really fuels these companies' uh, bottom lines. Let, let's let's go back just for a second because I want to just go over this one more time. Jurisdiction in America, that would be theft by deception. Corporations, as we now know from the U.S. Supreme Court, are people, and people need to follow the law. Dollar General's deceptive business practices run deeper than most realize, according to Stacey Mitchell a researcher at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. I think what they're looking for is places that have been, that, that lack you know, economic and political power, places that they can push around. They're often building in such numbers that it becomes impossible for a new grocery store or other locally owned businesses to develop in a neighborhood that really needs them. They kind of lock in poverty as they grow because poverty is the thing that really fuels these companies' uh, bottom lines. They thrive off of poverty. Poverty is their business model. Look, I'm gonna get back to that in a second, but let me share this with you guys. Because this is how, this is how much these dollar stores actually care about you. I appreciate this from World Socialist website, but they bring this out. Since perhaps not coincidentally, the news of the mass store closings come after Family Dollar was ordered February 27th to pay $41.6 million fine by the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Arkansas for storing food, cosmetics, medicine, and other products in a rat-infested warehouse, leading to scores of temporary closures for stores around the country. Look, it's right there. So you tell me, number one, they don't care about those of us who are working poor because they will let rats who will spread feces, 
and urine and diseases all around the products that we use every day, right? Imagine trying to get a pack of diapers and rats have been all over it. And now you may be spreading something to your kid. This is what's going on in this country in regards to these stores. And then on top of it, they thrive off of you being impoverished so that forces you to go to their stores. Why do you think I said in the thumbnail that they are taking advantage of you? That's ultimately what these stores are all about. So let's go back to the video. I just want to bring that out because that's really important because a lot of times people think, oh, well, these are just a better option for us. These are, you know, they're coming in and trying to help people by giving us a low cost option for our goods and services. Wrong, wrong. They don't care. Let's continue. All right. So we have the poorest people in the country going store that's deceiving them about the price that they're charging for goods um, in, in a situation where they have very few other realistic choices. I think it's about as exploitive a business plan uh, as I've ever seen. Almost every county in America and every state has a, a system for uh, making sure that people who uh, run cash registers do so honestly. Price verification is when we see that a product is listed for $2.99, take it up to the register, scan it, make sure it's ringing up as $2.99. Uh, we do a random sample of products that we pull. We're used to seeing one or two failures, getting it corrected uh, and, and feeling confident. Unfortunately, in Dollar General's case, it, it was uh, large and continuous. The scale or the concern was over 80% of the stores that we checked were failing and were failing repetitively and really no acknowledgement or desire to correct that failure. Despite being cited repeatedly, Dollar General neglected to correct the problem, prompting... So, they're overcharging, allegedly. Overcharging is part of their business model. So, and I'm going to make sure because... I'm going to tell my mama this too. Whenever you go to Jolly General, you have to check every single time the prices that's on the counter, that's on the shelf, and make sure either write it down for each one that you get or take a picture with your phone for each price of every single item that you get then once you go to then once you go to the cash register if it is higher than what is on that sticker and if they don't change it you walk your happy ass out that store do not give them your business if they're going to keep that that way because that's the only way that in the interim we can actually change that is by boycotting them and saying, no, unless you guys are actually honest about your prices, we're not going to shop with you. Because that's part of their business model, allegedly. To overcharge you. And here's the thing. They know they're overcharging the poorest of Americans. That means that they knowingly are knowingly causing you and I more suffering than we already are the top. It's crazy. Okay, let's continue. The Ohio Attorney General to file litigation against the store. One unique component in our conversation was the recognition of how Dollar General staffs or short staffs, staff were receiving no guidance uh, and were just kind of keeping the place open as best they could not really necessarily aware of the price verification challenge or duty and responsibility under Ohio law and then opportunities to correct it. If you have designed a business where you are deliberately understaffing your stores, you're deliberately cutting costs, 
um, you're going to end up having these kinds of, you know, uh, widespread mistakes in pricing. I mean, that's just the reality of you are not actually providing enough labor to comply with the law and make sure that people are, are getting uh, charged what, what the price actually is. That they is on purpose. They want to do that because they want to run skeleton crews so that they do not have to keep as many workers so that the profit margins are higher. See, this is, this is how capitalism works, right? So you have one or a very small group of people who own the means of production, right? Well, if they want to keep profits high, there's a few things that they have to do. One of the things that they have to do is they will pass that on to the consumer by making sure that prices go are, are higher, right? That's one of the ways how they do it. Another way they do it is by making sure that there's less workers so that the profits are higher so that they don't have to pay as much in operation costs. Well, this can also harm companies because they're not being in compliance with keeping the prices that are supposed to be there. This also is in making sure that because the, there are, these places are understaffed, the quality of customer service goes down because guess what? If customers aren't being served properly, because they have such a tight grip on the market, for them, it's like, oh, well, where are you going to go? Another Dollar General? Another Family Dollar? Another Dollar Tree? Okay, fine, whatever. We're still going to be here. So then also safety regulations, right? Those things go by the wayside. Look, those rat infestations that happen in, Ar in Arkansas and their warehouses, how much you want to bet because they didn't want to spend the money for pest control because that's money that they wanted to pocket themselves and profit. So who gets sick? Your kid gets sick. Your mama gets sick. Your daddy gets sick. Everybody getting sick. Why? Because they want to keep more money in their pockets. Also, on top of that, you go to work for these people, and then guess what? You're stressed out because you have to work all these hours, and you have to get all this done while not just stocking in the back, but making sure that you keep an eye on the register so that you can go up and ring people up. So now you're being split in two just in order to be able to work the store. And, and it's not just a stress on you as a worker, but also your management. Because guess what? I used to work with somebody who managed a family dollar. And she literally had to run the entire store by herself. So even when you're in management, you're getting screwed over. This is why workers should own the means of production. It should not be left to the devices of shareholders and these executives because these corporatists will run things into the ground. They will run the community into the ground. They'll run workers into the ground. Mm -mm -mm. It's wild. They have decided that they can make more profit by violating all of these laws, by understaffing, by cutting corners. And right now, the fines that are associated with doing that are simply a cost of doing business. They are too low to make a difference and to stop this organization from behaving this way. That's another point that I wanted to bring out. Is that even if they have a fine, they'll just pay the fine. It's easier just to do that and then keep doing the transgression that they're committing against you. They factored that cost in. They factored the cost of being fined already in there. So of course they're gonna keep violating it. This is why they need to feel pain. And what do we do? This is why the system needs to change. Dollar General has been fined over $20 million by states and the federal government since 2017. But those fines, which pale in comparison to the amount Dollar General has siphoned from communities, have done little to change the company's behavior. There are 19,000 stores. There are 
literally millions of transactions a day, uh, millions of items sold a day in Dollar General stores. And even if 10% of the time they're stealing 10 cents on 10% of the items that are sold, uh, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars going into the pockets of, of Dollar General shareholders and out of the pockets of the poorest people in America. If you're a systematic violator of laws as a company, uh, what's the deeper way that we can go after you? At some point, you've got to be shut down if you can't reform your behavior, um, because clearly this this one-off approach that we're using is not working. And I think that it's time for, uh, for Dollar General to pay the price civilly, uh, to pay the customers for what they've stolen from them, to change their business practices for how they go forward in the future. And I don't think it's, it's far-fetched at all to think that the corporate executives um, who, who hatched this scheme uh, ought to be prosecuted. They can build this little metal building in a week, maybe two max, and everybody's getting ripped off every day. It's only a quarter here. It's a dime here. It's 35 cents here. Who has the time to go and write a letter and complain over a quarter? Well, I do. So that's Dollar General. I'm going to share something with you guys, too. Because I wanted to share uh, this as well. When talking about companies like Dollar General, I think it's important to talk about and follow the money. Because once you follow the money, that gives you an indication of who owns what and how intertwined everything is, right? So let's go to Dollar General. Let me share this. This is Dr. Dollar General stock ownership, right? So Dollar General Corporation, right? The holders, top institutional holders, Vanguard, BlackRock, Capital International Investors, T. Rowe Price, Capital World Investors, State Street, Geo Capital Management LLC, Morgan Stanley, Longview, Norges, all these, all these guys, these guys are the, the notorious shareholders that own a piece of everything. Vanguard owns 11.42%. BlackRock owns 8.83%. State Street owns 4.39% of Dollar General. So this is what it is. It's always at the behest of the shareholders like Vanguard, State Street, BlackRock, T. Rowe Price, all these ones. They're always the culprits. It's like every single time we're going through some, some BS regarding our, our the corporations in our country, it's always those few who are always involved. Now, let's take a look at Dollar Tree, which owns Family Dollar. This is Dollar Tree. Top institutional holders. Well, what do you know? Take a look again. Vanguard, Capital World Investors, BlackRock, Mantle Ridge, Nomura Holdings, Capital International Investors, State Street, Edgepoint, FMR, T. Rowe Price. Same companies, same corporations, same, same the same ones. So no matter where you go, you're going to be giving your money to the same Wall Street institutions that essentially own our dollar stores that are making money off of poverty. 
And they know this. And they don't care. This is why I, I can't stand going to them. I can't stand going to them now. But what else, what other choice did you have? And then on top of it, a lot of these stores are in rural areas where you don't have a grocery store that close. So you may have to go to that Dollar Tree that has the frozen food section because you really don't have access to an actual grocery store where they have the fruits and veggies that are out for you. They don't have the fresh meats, you know, that are out there for you. So you may have to go to one of these stores, which means that it is a halfway point between a convenience store and a grocery store, and yet you're still in a food desert. So this is also against people, those of us who are working poor in rural areas. This is why it is important to follow the money because ultimately they just don't care about you. Their goal is to exploit and to take advantage of you day in and day out. This is why I always call for workers to own. This is why I push for things like work co-ops. This is why I push for changing of the system. Because they want you to stay in poverty. You don't think BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard, you don't think they don't want you to stay in poverty? Oh, they do. Because they make money off of your desperation. This system needs to be taken out of their hands. It needs to be done now. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. More head kisses and have a beautiful day.